CTE is uh, the acronym we use for chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And uh, this is a neurodegenerative disease that involves the tau protein. It's the same protein that builds up in Alzheimer's disease, but this is not Alzheimer's disease. This disease is, is associated with uh, repetitive injuries to the brain uh, that come from contact uh, head injuries uh, in contact sports, um, as well as, and as we reported previously, uh, military blast exposure. This is not the injury itself, it's the neurodegenerative disease that develops as a consequence of. What we have done in this paper is really three fundamental things. One is we've looked at the very earliest stages of, of this disease in teenagers with the earliest fingerprints of a neurodegenerative disease. Um, it's kind of staggering to even think about this a teenager with a neurodegenerative disease. What we were able to do in this paper is look at the, those very rare cases of uh, post-mortem brains, that is, brains we received after death, from teenagers who have had a relatively recent concussive or subconcussive head injury and look to see what their brains look like uh, when they've died uh, days, weeks, months afterwards from another cause. The important thing to know about the small number of cases is not that it is a small number of cases, but that we can learn from these even single cases that will allow us to develop hypotheses that then we can test in the laboratory. So the first part, we have a neurodegenerative disease in teenagers and we can correlate this. That is, A correlates with B. What we can't determine from the human neuropathology is whether A causes B. That is, do, what is the relationship of the hit or the hits to the incipient disease? And that's what the second part of the paper is involved uh, in, in focusing on. So we want to know how these head injuries are related to brain damage and ultimately to CTE and are those things connected, and if so, how? Blast exposure um, in, in the experimental models that we did previously, it had to do with the blast wind, and what that led to is movement of the head. So knowing that it likely had something to do with the head motion, or that was our hypothesis, we built the models to test that, to see if we could impart the head motion in a different way, in this case with contact. Um, to make the head move the same way. And we were able to do this with a, a, a large engineering team. After even a um, very few number of exposures, we could trigger not only the traumatic brain injury, which had been reported for many decades, but that we could actually trigger CTE pathology that was strikingly similar to what we see in people. So now that we have a model in which we can induce the disease. This allows us now to start to develop new ways of picking this up at really very early um, stage of the disease process. And what we did here is uh, take advantage of an older technology called dynamic contrast enhanced MRI. This is a brain imaging technique. And we were able to pick up the type of damage that we saw in the brain and now pick it up in the living animal. And this is very helpful as we try to move this into the clinic to detect early fingerprints of the disease. The main message of, of this work is concussion doesn't cause the CTE, but rather the hit itself, independent of concussion, causes CTE.